Um, so hi, my name is Mary Elizabeth Ryder. Most people call me M.E. Um, and uh, it's uh, my privilege to do the girls list in, um, in South Central Alaska. Does anybody know what the girls list is? Yay! <laughs> you saw our posts. <laughs> the Girls List is a virtual women's community in South Central Alaska. And my friend Jill and I have been doing this together for a number of years. Um, the Girls List was founded by another gal about 18 years ago as a way of coordinating information among a group of friends who couldn't get their social act together. And she said, well, for Pete's sake, and then made a list of all the activities that we could be doing and then started sharing it. It's grown. We now have 1,600 women who get the girls list in South Central Alaska and around the state. Um, and then there's a, uh, we have some companion organizations, Bent Alaska, Christopher Constant runs Bent Alaska. Um, there are about 1,600 people, men and women, who, who all get bent, which is a little more political than the girls list. We're a little more social. Um, so the real gay agenda, uh, what's happened for us over the years is people move into town, they move into Alaska, they want to find their people. But it's not so easy to find your folks. So, you know, I, I see um, some folks I know over there in the corner and I say, hey, Joel, where do I find my people? And he says, oh. <laughs> hard to say. I say, hey, Eric, where do I find my people? Ah. <laughs> he doesn't know either. because. What do my people look like? They look like me, and I look like somebody's mom, which, you know, I am. And <laughs> a lot of people are somebody's mom. Uh, and so we ask, we ask every couple of years, um, we ask our folks, you know, where do you find your folks? What do you do? What's for fun? Where do you shop? What kind of shoes do you wear? And then we try to find out if the guys will share the same information. And we've been doing this since 2006. Uh, we, about every couple of years, we ask these questions, and then we have to do something called cleaning the data. Has anybody ever cleaned data? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Do you know how many ways you can spell Fred Meyer? <laughs> That's what we've been doing. <laughs> so we've been cleaning data. Um, we, we clean the data and then we report it back. And then when somebody new moves into town or wants might be, we share that information with them. We also share that information with folks who are vendors um, because we think they might want to know. Alcro from the uh, Anchorage Chamber of Commerce um, developed a real serious interest in, in the diversity issues in, in Anchorage specifically. He was pretty excited to find that there is actual data out there because this is the only data about our community um, so far. Now, what we do is not scientific. It is not market research. It is the research of the people who responded to the survey. So you can't take it more seriously than it is, and yet it's what there is. Um, so here we have the real gay agenda. Gay people are associated with good business. Did you know that? I didn't. I kind of would have hoped so, but it's the truth. We are associated with good business. Biggest problem for us in Alaska, um, this tolerance of LGBTQ people, you know, we're, we're pretty tolerant. We feel like we're pretty tolerant. Um, Anchorage actually doesn't rank in the top 50 metropolitan areas by a whole bunch of indices that indicate robust economic growth. Did you know that? I was sad. Um, the Millikan Tech Growth Index, we're not there. The Com Composite Diversity Index, not there. The Gay Index, no. Foreign Born Index, no. The Bohemian Index, no. The Talent Index, no. The Tech Poll, tech poll Index, no. And yet, Anchorage ranks 19th in the number of LGBTQ cities in the nation for our size. I was pretty interested in that. I'm trying to figure out what it is we do to make Anchorage more tolerant. Get us more robust economically. This is what makes people love where they live. This is from the, the, the Knight Foundation, hired the Gallup Corporation to work with a bunch of, of cities around the country. Um, aesthetics is number three as a priority for how we decide where we're going to live. Uh, social offerings, what makes life fun, that's number two. But openness, openness to diversity is number one. Those three in combination is what um, makes a really robust city. We're average. We are so, so average. 
I don't like being average. <laughs> and yet that's what we are. Um, the Gallup uh, Corporation did a poll. You all heard the Gallup Corporation. It's a national polling firm. They've, you know, pretty serious at what they do. Um, they did a nationwide survey of gay, lesbian, and bisexual. And the, the phone call went something like this. Do you identify yourself as gay, lesbian, or bisexual? You know, or like something else. 3.4% of Alaskans said they were. And that is exactly the national average, exactly. Uh, now, North Dakota is the least gay place in the country, apparently. We, <laughs> we're not there. <laughs> we're average. Um, Alaska is the 26th gayest place in the country, the 26th, that we are so average, and Anchorage is not the gayest place in Alaska. What do you think might be the gayest place in Alaska? Juno, <laughs> it's not Ketchikan. <laughs> it's the second. Uh, that that bugs me. <laughs> hey, and this is not working. <laughs> Clicker, no working. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to go back and make sure we got it right. Yay. Okay, you're doing this, aren't you? Thank you. All right, would you please change the slide? <laughs> okay. So much for testing the tech. <laughs> yes, please? Thanks. Okay, so the girls list, we survey our community for us. I mentioned this earlier. We survey the women's community for us. We started trying to survey the men in 2010. Um, I'm a woman. I, I don't know all the guys. I don't have that relationship with them. It's kind of hard to survey the guys. So um, we tried in 2010 with Bent, we tried in 2012 with Bent, 2014 is our year. So this year we had uh, about 187 women and uh, 80 some guys, we had 308 people total uh, who were identified as male, female, transgender or something else. Um, we're going to be talking about men and women, and then I broke out trans in a couple of places so you could get a sense of what trans means in here, but it's very, very small numbers. But mainly, we survey, remember, this is for us. It's about us, for us, and we're sharing it with you. Would you please change? Thanks. This is what we know. We're very young. We are very diverse, and we have families. We have a growing senior population. In fact, at, um, according to the US Census, Alaska has the second highest senior population per capita in the nation, right behind Vermont. Yeah, it's good because, you know, some of us are going to get gray hair sometime. Um, the, we have responsible jobs. We hire people. We are in management. We're, we're pretty well, we're, we're, we're pretty linked in that way. Um, we have pets. We have a lot of pets. <laughs> We have a lot of children, and we have a lot more pets. We have a very active social lives. We are really outdoorsy. We think we are anyway, and we say we're spiritual. Our church is a whole other issue, though. And we shop, and we eat out, and we support this economy. Then I need you to know something, though. Um, gay is very, very old language. Lesbian is very, very old language. We might use it because we know you understand it, but queer is what's in, okay? So if you think you're a lesbian, great. You basically, you've just told me you're over 40. <laughs> if, you, if you say you're gay, you are also over 40. <laughs> and if you tell me you're homosexual, <laughs> you're my mom's age. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, um, when we asked, um, that about 70% of lesbians identified themselves as lesbians. They said, you know, what do you identify yourself as? That's what they came up with. And, they, and the men came up with gay. And 20% of the men said they were homosexual. Yeah. But queer is in. Um, we surveyed all over the state. I mean, we just put, we did this through SurveyMonkey. That's what we usually use. Um, and then we just put it out there anywhere we could get it. And this is where people came from. This, this is a, um, a hotspot map generated by Josh Hemseth from the Pride Foundation. Go, Josh. Are you here? Yay, Josh. <laughs> um, so you can see we had some um, pretty major responses from just all over the place. In Anchorage, where we care about today, um, the, the, the things that we knew to be true are still true, which is that um, downtown, midtown, and East Anchorage is where gay and lesbian people live. That, those are our hot spots. So if you live in 99501, 
504 and 508, that's your place. 504 is good, but 508 is where we really are. And if there is a gay neighborhood, it is Airport Heights. <laughs> but you knew that, right? So, yeah. Um, some people call that Dyke Heights. We, um, we had all ages, under 18 to over 76. If you want to know where we are, the women are way educated, the men are pretty darn educated. Um, and then we do pretty well for money too. Uh, we're, we're pretty average in some ways, like most of Anchorage is somewhere in the, you know, twenty-five to $75,000 range. Um, the people who responded to our survey are doing a little bit better than that. Uh, and where that's handy if you have a business or if you run a store or something like that, is you care about the people that we surveyed because we could find them and they have money. Two important things, all right? The women are disproportionately on the high end here, and so are the men. So they're making 200,000 a couple, you know, some people are making 200,000 a year, some in the 175 and above. We're doing pretty well. Um, we're working. Gay and lesbian people, trans people, we're working. The women and the men are working. Um, we're not looking for work, 5% for women, 2.3% for men. We're in pretty good shape for employment. Trans people, not so much. <laughs> She's supposed to give me a little thing that says I'm done. <laughs> We're couples. Um, most of them live, the women live with a partner, 43%, but 20% have a partner and they don't live with them. 37% um, of the women are single or dating, 52% of the men. It's hard to date. And the clicker's not clicking. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. 62% um, of the, uh, the couples in Alaska are female. Um, our rural communities have higher percentages of same-sex partnered households, and it's important because if you have a business, um, they're shopping here. And I don't know why. Thank you. Really diverse. In fact, we look an awful lot like everybody else in Alaska. Um, we have kids. We're raising these children. 23% of our, our, our couples are raising kids according to the U.S. Census, but according to our survey, it's o o like over a third of the women have children, and they're like one to four kids, and almost 20% of the men are doing the same. Um, if you're in rural Alaska, about 60 to 100% are raising children of those couples. Uh, that We're very, very military, and we're very, very veteran, 6.2% for the women, and just about 1% for the guys. Uh, we are the fifth highest number, um, pr proportion of vets in the nation live in Alaska. <laughs> How do you find each other? Women through the girls list. Um, but everybody uses Facebook. So if you're a business and you're trying to find us, you want to do Facebook ads, because that's how you're going to do it. We think that we're feminists. This is new. The women didn't used to think they were feminists. This is a radical departure. Used to be 30%, then it was 20%, then it was 13%. Now it's over 40% of the women who respond call themselves feminists. I'm speculating that that has to do with reproductive justice in Alaska. But everybody says we're outdoorsy. Older and wiser, um, Josh, are you here? Because you know what? I think that that could be interpreted as bossy. <laughs> okay. Um, we've, our party affiliations are always a surprise to the Democrats. We're really not as Democrat as you might think, um, but we are pretty independent. Um, nonetheless, we are Democrat. We are less Republican than we were two years ago. We're more likely to be independent. 3% uh, end up being un, uh, not registered to vote, and 15% a, a of the trans people who responded are not registered to vote. We shop at Fred Meyer, Midtown. We like Midtown Fred Meyer. You can spell it a bazillion ways. Can you see how many ways you can spell Fred Meyer? A lot. Um, we like Nusagaya, and we also like Natural Pantry. Hmm? Yes, we have pets. 80% uh, of us have pets, 80%. Do you know what this means for a rental market that has a 2% vacancy rate? It's hard. So if you want to rent to us, you need to rent, uh, you need to have a place that allows children, that can accommodate one to four children, and takes dogs, because we're actually not cat people. 
Only half of us are cat people, but 80% of us are dog people. Yeah. Where do you think we drive? <laughs> Subarus. No. <laughs> we used to drive Subarus. Actually, the men drive Subarus. The women have trended. The women have trended more towards SUVs and Toyota. <laughs> This is important if you own Continental Subaru. You should care about this. You should care about it a lot. We eat out a lot. We like our food. We like the bear tooth. Um, we like table six. Why do we like table six? Because the guys are cute. The Spinard Roadhouse is a real favorite too. All right. Can keep, just keep going. OK. Um, we love Tidal Wave. It's our favorite place. When we go out, we go to dinner and a movie. Um, if we're going for an upscale movie, we're, going to, um, we're not going to the Beartooth, which is our favorite place. We're going to end up going to uh, Tikatnu because we live on the east side. But if we're really doing well, a nice date, you'd take them out to the Alaska Center for the Performing Arts after dinner at, this, at Spinard Roadhouse. <laughs> Are you protected from discrimination in the workplace? What do you think they said? Guess what? People think they're dis that they're protected in their workplace, that their employers have protections. It, it was stunning to me, but they do. 61% of lesbians said that they were, yes, that they were protected. 71% of the gay men said yes, and 89% of the trans people said yes. I was shocked. Um, we don't think that that's... Um, necessarily accurate. We don't think that it's necessary. Part of it is the way I ask the question, which is, do you think that there is? Well, that doesn't mean you have one. Um, we think that people don't believe that they're threatened, which isn't the same thing as having overt protections. We ask three open-ended questions. Um, we ask, what do you like about Alaska and your, tra and your town? What would you improve your quality of life? And what would you change in our community? What we like is number one and two on the other index that I showed you, uh, the outdoors, the aesthetics, and the beauty of our state. What we'd improve is about legalized protections. They want, we want our marriages to be recognized in the, at the state level, less prejudiced overall, and warmer temperatures in a place in Hawaii would not hurt. <laughs> what we change in our community is more places to gather. We don't hang out at a bar. We just want to hang out. So what could make Anchorage more special? <laughs> I don't know. I think that we want those protections. Um, how Anchorage... How, my question to you is how average does Anchorage want itself to be? I don't think we want it to be real average. We want it to be more special. We want a robust economy. Please come out as a tolerant friend or neighbor. Um, please support non-discrimination issues, um, efforts, whatever they end up looking like. Hire queer folks because we're good for business. Pay attention to where we go, what we do for fun, because we're really cool. Survey results are going to be out probably in the next week or so because now the data is clean. We have these in the back of the room. Thank you. Thank you.